Welcome back to Completely Irrelevant. Today we're going to do something really fun. We're going to build a circuit that's for a guitar or a synthesizer or anything else. It's a distortion circuit, uh, but it's got a couple mods. It's a circuit that's been done several times, uh, probably thousands of times, as most circuits are. But it's pretty sweet. Uh, it has a volume knob. It has an on and off switch, of course. It has a LED mod and it has a tremolo effect using an old guitar pickup. One in and out, of course, with mono jacks. So we're gonna see what we can do today, uh, make this sweet uh, distortion pedal, and it's gonna be fun. Here we go. All right. Cue the music. Cue the music. Go team. All right, let's get started with some schematics here and some component uh, itemization. Oh man. So you can uh, pause this if you want and look at the schematic, but there's basically just a transistor, a resistor, a potentiometer, power source of course, uh, an input and output jack, and you got a couple capacitors there. Uh, then you have the pickup up on the left hand corner, and we can also add an LED for a mod for the actual tone quality, and another LED for a power source uh, as a little bonus in the video there. So let's get started here. The components here I'm going to write down. Now I did actually uh, swap out a couple switches here and there and uh, you know get inspired. It's basically a loose uh, component list. Uh, the transistor is important as far as the number as well as the capacitor and resistors, but you know play around. Oh yes, there is a diode in there as well uh, so you don't um, you know have power going the wrong way. That's never good. Here's some stuff that you might need. Uh, don't forget your colorfully assorted and carefully organized set of wires. So right here I'm putting in a capacitor and then a transistor. This is uh, just a basic prototype, so feel free to experiment. There's a diode over there, a resistor, then the capacitor. I'm gonna hook up to the pot over here. I like to do this before I actually put anything in the strip board because it actually uh, allows you to experiment a little without actually having to solder yet and move things around to make sure everything's working. This is the wire that's going to go to the power source. It's going to be 9 volts, so we can just use a simple 9 volt battery. And next we're going to solder some wires onto the input and output mono jacks. Quarter inch, of course. Uh, clean your soldering tip as much as you can with the wet sponge over there. Make sure you uh, tin all your wires, it's really important. That's my sweet project board. It's got all the uh, fun bells and whistles on it that you can experiment with. That's the uh, ground over there, hooking up the ground everything. I'm going to test the circuit right now to make sure it's all working. There's your strip board. You're going to be uh, putting your components on the top of there and then soldering on the bottom to connect all the joints. Make sure you set up your circuit in a proper way to get everything the most efficiently laid out, uh, but still be able to work, of course. So play around with what you want to do there. I just like to kind of lay my stuff out in a way that will uh, make sense to me. There's your uh, potentiometer there. Now remember to pause this video as much as you need to actually uh, figure out the layout. It's really hard <coughs> to actually show all the components going on here in the correct way without really like taking a lot of time. So if you need to pause or you know just kind of take a look at what's going on here, just just as much as you need to to kind of figure out the layout here. This is just a basic design. There they are, capacitors. You got a ceramic disc capacitor. Uh, then the electrolytic capacitor, the diode, the resistor, and the transistor, along with a couple jacks there and the potentiometer. Here's all your wires coming out the bottom from the strip board. You're just going to solder each wire where it is. No big deal. Just make sure you get all your solder joints on every wire. And uh, then you can lift them up with some pliers if you need to and just cut all the leads off. No big deal, right? All the strip board goes across, as you might have seen before, connects all the uh, points together. Here is your... Uh, 
heat shrink tubing, which is like a really super cool thing. Go ahead and uh, cut a little piece off of there, get a lighter real close to it, just don't touch it. And that, uh, that heat shrink tubing is gonna shrink on there and create a nice little insulated, uh, insulated tube around those wires to uh, protect that solder joint. Here's your switch that's gonna go on there and of course your nine volt battery connector. Go ahead and get those tinned. Connect the wire on there and uh, give that heat shrink tubing on there for a nice uh, protective insulation. That switch is gonna be controlling the on and off switch for the power. You wanna connect those two red wires from the switch to the nine volt there. So what you're gonna wanna do is connect the uh, two main wires from your uh, guitar magnetic coil pickup. You're gonna put those two wires together for one magnetic um, connection point and then the other wire is gonna be your ground wire, of course. So in this case right here, you have your red wire going to the main source of where it's gonna be picking up and then the yellow wire is going to the ground connection. So much information. Yeah, it's hard to get all That's in there. That's a lot of information. Yeah. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, so I'm just getting the switch off of there and putting it in there instead of the micro switch that was shown on the table earlier. Anything to add there, buddy? <laughs> I think you got it covered pretty well. Here is the LED that's going to be used for the mod switch. There is an anode and cathode lead, as you might already know. One is just a positive and one is a negative. Uh, the cathode is the negative, which is going to be the flat I'm sorry. spot on the Where LED. Are you talking? <laughs> <laughs> How are those chips? Oh, no, extra one. crunchy. Make sure you uh, you know follow your leads, check everything carefully, make sure it's all going. I know it is a fast-paced video to actually understand what's all going on here. It's really about just getting inspired and checking the schematic yourself and following the map that's drawn out uh, to make it yourself. On the bottom there with all those green wires, you have all your ground connection points for everything. If you look at the resistor in the far right-hand upper corner, you're going to notice that is a resistor for the actual power LED that comes on. The resistor to the left in the middle there is the resistor for the LED mod. Next to that resistor, slightly to the right, is your transistor, which is going to make the most of your gain sound when you're actually making the distortion pedal work. Here is your final design. I was all hooked up. If you need to pause, this is a really good time to actually see what's all going on here. Now we're going to build the case. Look. Check this out. I actually used a, 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 a freaking um, electrical box for uh, the box here. Instead of buying 12, 15, 20 dollar project boxes, go to your local hardware store in the electrical aisle and this thing is like $2. Literally, it's like $1.50 to $2 and you get this sweet box that's already made. You drill some holes and uh, you have your own little distortion pedal box. It's great. It's a great solution. Save a lot of money. Good idea. Thanks. You're so creative. Yeah, I try. Like a mad scientist. Yeah, I do what I can, really, I mean. You can do this if you don't want those uh, holes to punch out. Those, those holes are made to punch out, so you gotta be really careful, drill really slowly. Uh, if you're not careful, you might accidentally punch one out <coughs> and hurt yourself. Like this. Yeah, it's gone, it's never coming back. But I do have a solution. Take this plastic washer, you're gonna fit it right in there and uh, you can actually put your uh, guitar input jack right into one of those and put it in there and tighten the nut on the other side. I dropped a chip on your floor, bitch. What was that? That was, that was my uh, spray paint, um, my my dance. To make sure everything gets painted well. Where'd you get that nine volt battery connector, dude? I pulled it out of something. Like you can tell, it's like older. Like a toy. Yeah, it's amazing. All these components can be found in like household items. Like if you're gonna throw away something, make sure you open it up if it has electronics, because like you can build this whole circuit with like random parts that you get out of like whatever don't buy anything man just like make cool stuff out of stuff that's already made you're recycling and it's fun
I put a little washer over the LED here, and then I'm putting some hot glue on there, and it's actually just gluing the LED right in the hole. Works well. I put some rubber feet on the bottom of the uh, box here to protect the bottom of the metal strip board from touching the metal box, which you really don't want to happen. And then I just screw the strip board right into the rubber feet. No big deal. It's all protected and insulated in there. Testing things along the way again to make sure everything's working. And then just screw that box together once you got all everything soldered back together. It's the best. Where do electricians get their supplies? Where? The Ohm Depot. <laughs> <laughs> Put your favorite knob on there. Don't forget your knob. All right, let's get this guy going. And we'll put the on switch on. Put the lights up. Now turn up the volume a little bit. You hear a slight buzz. Nothing to be worried about. Most good distortion circuits have a nice little noise going on. Now we're gonna crank up the guitar. Let's see how it sounds. All right, that's about halfway volume up. We can definitely crank it if we want to. Now, if you want to do an LED mod, you flip the mod switch right here. It's going to cut your volume down just a hair, but it's going to be a nice clean drive. So go ahead and get your volume a little bit higher on the pedal. If you need to crank up your amp, you can. Still got a little bit of nice distortion there, but less gain, a little bit more clean tone. Now, if you happen to have a handy wrench laying around with a sweet magnet on it, right there, you're gonna give yourself a little vibrato effect. It's super fun. All right, well, that was super fun. Got a sweet distortion circuit. You can plug in your guitar, your synthesizer, whatever. Make sure you don't use an analog circuit that's super hot. It'll be really noisy. Anyways, uh, turned out pretty good. You can uh, experiment with what you want. Uh, add your own mods. Obviously, there's a extra strip board available inside for upgrades uh, eventually. Other than that, experiment with different magnets, different size magnets. Uh, more powerful magnets are gonna give you a different warble, a different tone. Uh, you know, do what you want and uh, take something from here, but experiment yourself as well. And uh, just remember, in the vastness of space, this is completely irrelevant. This is completely irrelevant. Let's get out of here. It's all about continuity. Yeah, continuity. Continent nuity. Cont co continuity. Bye. <laughs>